Hey guys, so this is part two of my last video about KMAPs and some of the products. Um, so if you have problems with KMAPs, please watch the last part of the video. Otherwise, um, you don't really need to watch it. Uh, so we're going to focus on product of sums. And we'll start out by just saying that we're grouping zeros in our KMAP. So we'll get some red here. And I can see right away that we have a group of four. So again, if you're unsure about grouping, please watch my last video, because um, I go over a bit of an explanation about grouping. Um, so here we have a zero here that's kind of lingering. Um, and there are a couple things that we can do here. We can go along the edge here, group it like that, or group it along the corner. Um, so I'm going to do... I think a corner group or will work best in this case. So now we'll have our red section, we'll have our pink section. If you don't know what I'm doing, please watch my last video. Uh, so in our red group, we have 0, 1, 1, we have 0, 1, 0, we have 1, 1, 1. And we have one, one, zero. In our pink group, we have zero, zero, zero. And we have one, one, zero. Perfect. So now we want to check which values have stayed the same. So we can tell here that we have all ones. So that means that we can forget about x for our first set of terms, and we can forget about z for our first set of terms. We will only have y. And since we're doing product of sums, I put it to put the y in brackets because we will be multiplying it by our pink here. So here we actually only have not z, so we end up with an interesting case where our product of sums is actually only a product. If we had more groups or different values in the groups, then you may have ended up with something like x plus y multiplied by not z, or something similar. So you're doing the product of sums. So you're multiplying some series of sums. Alright, so since we're doing product of sums, there's actually an extra step to do here. We have our function. But the thing is, is that since we're doing product of sums, our little extra step is that we have to inverse our function. So f will actually be equal to this, which is So this is our real function f. So when we're drawing our circuit, we'll have x, y, z. x is not going to go to anything because we don't care about x for this. y will have an inverter. We have z. And it's super simple. It's just an AND gate. And then f. So that's our circuit. Now you might get a question. Um, here, I want to actually erase this. You might get a question that says, okay, uh, draw the K-map and draw the circuit for this or this. Um, so, I mean, you can have different numbers in uh, either kind of the sigma thing or this uh, pi thing. Um, and what this means is sum of products, oops, and this is product of sums. So if the question doesn't specifically say, hey, solve this with product of sums or sum of products or whatever, um, if the question uses this type of notation, then you'll know right off the bat 
to what you have to use. And what you do from then is you don't need a truth table for this one. Um, you'll take your K map. So I'm just going to cut out for a second while I draw another K map. All right, I gave up on straight lines and fancy stuff. So we can label our squares here. So this will be square 0, square 1. And if you remember, we kind of shifted the two columns here. So we're going to shift them again. So that's 3, that's 2, that's 4, that's 5. And remember, we shifted columns. So that's 7, and that's 6. Okay, so now you honestly just fill it in. So if you have some products here, that means that in location 0, you'll have a 1. In location 3, you'll have a 1. In location 7, you'll have a 1. So then you can start doing your grouping. In a case like this, I think that you might actually need don't cares because all of these would be zeros. So I don't know if I'm going to make a video on don't cares yet, but if I do, stay tuned. Um, and then we'll do B here. So I'm going to cut out again. I'll draw another really neat K. Okay, so here we have 16 squares for this one because we go past uh, square 7, which is our maximum here. So the reason why I only used 8 for A is because we only went up to 7. But here for this one, we go up to 9, which means that it's likely a 16 square K map. So we have spot 0, we have spot 1, 3, 2, 4, 5, 7, 6. And we swapped bits again here. So these are actually switched around as well as the last two columns. So I'm actually going to go down here, so we'll have 8 here, 9, 11, 10, 12, 13, 15, and 14. Okay, so where do we have our values? So since here we're doing the product of sums, it's going to be zeros that we're counting. So in spot 1, we have a 0. In spot 8, we have a 0. And in spot 9, we have a 0. So the rest are 1s, which we are not counting. And then you'd be able to start your grouping. Okay, so I hope that's straightforward enough. We're going to get into NAND and NOR gate implementation now. Okay, so for NAND gate implementation, um, the boolean function that you're given has to be in sum of products. Okay, so let's say we have the circuit A, B, C, D. E. These will be anded because remember we're doing sum of products. So your leftmost gates will be ands. And here we have a floater E. And all these will get plugged into an OR and will become F at the end. Okay, so now what we want to do is add two inverters on each line. So we're going to add inverter here, and then another one, and another one here, and another one here, and another one here, and another one here. So I think you can agree with me that by adding these inverters, I did not change the output. Because as soon as the input goes through one inverter, it gets flipped. But then if it goes through the second inverter, it'll get flipped again. So by adding these two inverters on each line, I've changed nothing. So now what you can do is you can group these inverters. So those are the second inverters. These are the first inverters on the line. Sorry, I could have probably drawn this a little bit better. So you group the inverters. So now you'll have a circuit like this. And then 
tailgate. I'm gonna actually try to draw it better this time around. With E, with A, B, C, D. And you'll have negated input going into the OR. And you'll have negative, negated rather, output coming out from the NAND. And then when it comes to E down here, you can actually just give it its own NAND gate, because we have to have all NAND gates. So if you plug E in here, the NAND will basically just act as its own little kind of gate inverter. So now we have our first inverter attached to all of the leftmost gates, and our second inverter is attached to the rightmost gate, which is an OR. So now we can make the conversion. So now we have some NAND gates here on the left. What are NAND gates in terms of NAND gates? Well, <laughs> they're just NAND gates. So we can keep those, we can leave them as is. But when you have an OR gate with all reversed input, this actually becomes a NAND gate. So all of our gates have suddenly become NAND gates just by adding inverters. So you'll be left over with Oops, that's probably not a good way to draw that. That's better. Then we'll have this one here. E. M, A, B, C, D. I forgot how to draw a D for a sec. We'll hop and go in there. Okay. And, of course, this will output and become F. So that's going to be your NAND gate implementation. NOR gate implementation is the exact same thing except that it's with product of sums. So I'm going to scooch this to the side, delete this, and we'll write product of sums NOR. You know what, I'm actually going to delete this now because we don't need it anymore. So if we have a product of sums uh, boolean function and we're trying to do NOR gate implementation, then to do a similar example as before, we'll have A, B, C, D, E. All of our first gates will be OR gates. And, oops, okay, that's F. So now we're going to add our inverters. So when we add the two inverters on each line, we'll have inverted output on our ORs and inverted input on our AND. So inverted NOR is just inverted NOR. And inverted input AND is also just inverted NOR. Logically, they're the same. So now we end up with a circuit. Oh, yeah, we forgot to add our inverters here. That is also the same as a NOR. So now we will end up with the circuit. These are really, really clear. <laughs> Sorry about this. Oh, God, this is horrible. Alright, so that's your NOR gate implementation. So I probably made it sound a lot more complicated than it is. Really, just transform every single gate into either a NAND gate or a NOR gate. But that's to show your work, that's how you do it. So I think that's it for this video. Um, I think I might do don't cares in a future video. I'm not sure yet, though, so stay tuned for that. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Happy.